Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown. And in today's video, guys, I want to talk about some news and some notes about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their pursuit of a goalie. So first off, let's give an update on Jack Campbell. On the night of the first round of the draft, after the Toronto Maple Leafs had traded Peter Mrazek away, Kyle Dubas went on to say that the increased cap space opens up options via trade or for agency for a goalie, and that included Jack Campbell, who he planned with to meet when he returned to Toronto. But Darren Dreger yesterday on Twitter reporting that the results of that meeting were friendly but unproductive. Nothing's really changed in the negotiations between Campbell and the Maple Leafs. And then James Myrtle chimed in on Twitter to say that Edmonton is heavily rumored to be going after Jack Campbell and that it may come down to between the Leafs and Oilers uh, for who signs him. Up on the screen right now are stats of goalies who have signed contracts in the NHL over the last two years. And if you're comparing their numbers to Jack Campbell over the last two seasons, you can see why he could possibly be asking for north of $5 million on a three, four, or five-year deal. He posted very similar numbers to goalies like Cal Peterson and Linus Olmark, and even Elvis Merz-Lincolns, who got $5.4 million over five years. Now, all of those goalies are a couple of years younger than Jack Campbell, who will be 31 at the start of next year, but... At the same time, it may just come down to whoever's willing to offer him that fourth or fifth year at the most money possible. This is the only big ticket contract that he's going to be signing in his career. We'll talk about Jack Campbell a little bit later on in the video and compare him to the other guys who are currently available. But Elliot Friedman dropped this bomb yesterday and I was pretty much just frantically refreshing Twitter at work for the rest of my shift. Word is that Ottawa and Toronto have intensified discussions around goalie Matt Murray. We will see how things play out, but those conversations continue. Matt Murray is 28 years old and has two years remaining on a deal that has a cap hit of $6.25 million a year. But the real money that's owed to him is actually higher than his cap hit at $7 million this season and $8 million the year after. The goal of a Matt Murray trade for the Ottawa Senators is to save as much money as possible. They're definitely a team that considers the real dollars a little bit more so than what a player's actual cap hit is. And if they were to retain the maximum, which is 50%, 50% of the $15 million that's still owed to him, that'd be $7.5 million that they would save, opposed to the only $5 million that they would save if they were to buy him out. So there is an incentive to trade him rather than just buying him out. And the less money that the Ottawa Senators retain in this trade, the more incentive they have to actually make it versus buying him out. If they were to retain only 25% and then a third team comes in and retains 50% after that, the Maple Leafs would be receiving him at a $2.3 million cap hit versus his original $6.25 million number. And if you're of the opinion that $2.3 million is too much for a guy like Matt Murray and the Leafs would just be better off to wait for the Senators to have no choice but to buy him out and then sign him for less money afterwards, even a guy like Martin Jones who was bought out last offseason signed a one-year deal worth $2 million and I'd say that Matt Murray is definitely the better goalie. There's only so many goalies to go around and ever since the Kraken came into the league, the cost of them has just gone up. The Ottawa Senators bought out Colin White about a week or so ago, and now they're trying to save every dollar they can in a Matt Murray deal. And that's not because they want to just bank the money. They wanted to go out and get Alex to bring it at the draft, and now apparently they want Claude Giroux in for agency. Knowing what the Ottawa Senators are trying to do with this money gives any team that's trying to trade with them here, whether it's the Leafs or a third team just retaining salary, a lot of leverage because... Claude Giroux is a really damn good player, and if they really want him, well, they're going to have to pay for him. And we already know what the Senators are willing to pay to shed Matt Murray's contract because of a draft day trade that was leaked between them and the Sabres, where the Sabres would have received Matt Murray with salary retained and the seventh overall selection in exchange for the 16th pick in this year's draft. And the only reason why the trade didn't go through was because Murray used his no trade clause to block the deal to Buffalo. I'll be honest with you, Matt Murray isn't my favorite option for the Leafs in net. I'd probably like him a lot more if I knew that they were going to acquire somebody else as well, and that's for a few different reasons that we'll get into. 
The first reason being is that just like Frederick Anderson and just like Jack Campbell and just like Peter Mrazek, Matt Murray has struggled with his fair share of injuries the last couple of years, and you pair that with him not playing so well over the last couple of seasons, and it's enough to make you nervous, especially if the Leafs don't have anyone else that they can rely on playing behind him. But to be fair to Matt Murray, the Ottawa Senators haven't been very good the last couple of years, especially defensively. Now, he was sent down to the American Hockey League at one point last year, but if you remember that story, it sounded like there was more to that than just his performance. When they recalled him at the start of 2022, he played in 14 games before his season was ended with that concussion, and he posted a 9-12 save percentage. But overall on the season, Matt Murray had a 9-08 save percentage in 20 games for the Senators, and even had a positive goal save above expected, which measures the quantity and quality of scoring opportunities that a goalie faces relative to the goals that they allow. It's not a perfect stat, and it is a counting one. So the more games that you play or the more scoring chances that you face, the more opportunities you'll have to either positively or negatively contribute to that stat. So it's not necessarily the greatest stat for measuring who's just the best goalie league-wide, but it is a good one to measure on a case-to-case -case basis. If you have a negative goal save above expected and you're playing for a team that doesn't really allow very many scoring opportunities, well, then you're not necessarily helping your team. But if you're a goalie playing on a team who gives up a lot of scoring opportunities and you have a positive goal save above expected, that means you're helping them out, but they really aren't in front of you. And if we're looking at where the Leafs and the Senators ranked league-wide in terms of defensive metrics at 5-on-5 five five last year, in terms of the shot attempts, the actual shots, the actual goals, the expected goals, the scoring opportunities, and the high-danger shot attempts against, we can see that the Leafs were a much better defensive team last year at 5-on-5 five five than the Senators. And that's not necessarily a hot take. If I just said that the Leafs were better at defense than the Ottawa Senators, you'd probably believe me without seeing the numbers. Using these numbers, we can probably infer that Matt Murray would be better on the Toronto Maple Leafs than what he was on the Ottawa Senators, but don't quote me on that. Goalies are funny. Kevin Weeks on Twitter did note that the thing that's mainly holding up this deal is the health of Matt Murray. Like we said, his season last year ended with a concussion, and he's had injuries in the past, and the Leafs are mainly just doing their due diligence on his health at this point. The Maple Leafs also have a new goalie coach. I believe Steve Breer was with the organization since 2016, and I think it was James Myrtle who made a note a couple of weeks ago that the Maple Leafs were actually very frustrated with him over the last couple of years that he couldn't help Frederick Anderson or Jack Campbell break out of the extended slumps that they found themselves in at one point or another, especially with Anderson going to Carolina and seemingly fixing his game instantly. I know people like to bring up Frederick Anderson, especially when discussing the Maple Leafs and their goaltending, but the main reason why they let him go was because he just couldn't stay healthy. And Peter Morazic had his own health concerns, but Freddie Anderson just didn't want to play in a tandem with Jack Campbell, where Peter Morazic was more accepting of that role. And Anderson had a really good year in Carolina, and they're a very good defensive team, but ultimately he got hurt right before the playoffs, and they weren't able to rely on him when they needed him the most. In terms of the impact the new goalie coach could have on the team, we're going to have to wait and see, obviously, but Sanford spent the last number of years with the Vancouver Canucks organization and helped develop Thatcher Demko, Spencer Martin even, who are good young goalies for them. I've seen a couple of videos on TikTok a while ago, strange place to see them, of him working with both those guys, and they seemed receptive to what he was saying, so um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. The last thing that I wanted to mention here is that a lot of people in Toronto like to see that the regular season doesn't matter. All that matters is the playoffs. And Matt Murray, like we said, he's had some injuries. He's gone through some personal stuff as well with his father passing away a couple of years ago. The Maple Leafs and Kyle Dubas and even Sheldon Keefe know this guy really well, having had him on the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. If they know what motivates him, what can help him, if they have a personal relationship with him already and they can help him get healthy, um, Matt Murray was a really, really good goalie for the Pittsburgh Penguins in the playoffs. There's only two guys in the free agent goalie pool who played more than 40 games last year, and that's Darcy Kemper and Jack Campbell. And with Campbell comes concern of injuries and the fact that last year in the first couple of months, he was the best goalie in the NHL, but in the second half, he had a save percentage under 900 and just wasn't healthy to the point where they almost considered going out and getting Marc-Andre Fleury at the trade deadline, 
And the same thing with the year before. He was good when he was healthy, but he wasn't healthy very often. And that sort of describes Darcy Kemper's career to this point. He was good for the Avalanche in the regular season, but dealt with an eye injury in the playoffs. I mean, he was good enough for them to win the Stanley Cup, but the fact that he needed to see an optometrist daily throughout that playoff run doesn't inspire confidence when you're considering signing the 32-year-old to a five- or six-year deal worth almost six million bucks. And with Campbell, the same sort of thing. He's 30, turning 31. A four- or five-year deal for him doesn't necessarily excite me. Even the options that would break the bank for the Maple Leafs in terms of cap hit come with similar pros and cons to the ones that Matt Murray has. So I don't know what the right answer is here. I know that they need a good goalie in order to win, but if all of them come with injury concerns, their best course of action might be to get two guys. And I don't know if they can afford to do that if they go with someone like Kemper or Campbell. Their biggest area of need is goaltending, and it's arguably the most important position in the sport. But at the same time, the Colorado Avalanche did just win a Stanley Cup with Darcy Kemper, posting a 902 save percentage through these past playoffs. So it's not impossible to win without a dominant number one goalie in the playoffs, but it definitely helps if you do have one of those, and I don't see where the Maple Leafs are getting one. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. So make sure to like it if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, tomorrow I wanted to do a video looking at some free agents that I wanted the Maple Leafs to take a look at. But obviously, if there's breaking news, we'll have to do the breaking news first. If there is a trade completed, uh, just scrolling through Twitter, there's nothing new as of now. Um, but I would expect a lot of posts in the next couple of days because I do have Tuesday and Wednesday off. So that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one.